We know our viewers are aware of the synthesis of ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen. I mean, who isn't? It is a widely used industrial process. This large scale synthesis is needed for production of fertilizers and explosives, and it owes its invention credits to Fritz Haber, the Nobel Prize winner in chemistry in 1918 for the Haber Bosch process. Welcome to Science Saturdays, an all-new podcast series that dives into the all-aspiring lives of researchers whose scientific contributions broke all barriers and transformed the way we understand the universe. My name is Shamijit and in this episode, I will give you a sneak peek into the life of Fritz Haber, the famous German chemist and Nobel laureate. Though the brilliance of his innovations and the crucial importance that their applications hold, we are about to witness a life of accomplishments as well as tragedies. They throw light on the great power that scientists hold in the advancement of the knowledge reservoir and also in the socio-political relations in life of mankind. In the first segment, we shall present an overview of Fritz Haber's education and career. Fritz Haber was born on December 9, 1868 in Brusselio, Germany, in one of the oldest Jewish families of the town. He was a son of Siegfried Haber and received his early education at the local gymnasium. Influenced in part by his father's occupation as a successful importer of natural dyes and pigments, he began studying chemistry at the University of Berlin in 1886, but transferred to Heidelberg after a single semester. After only a year and a half at Heidelberg, Haber's university career was interrupted by a year of military service. He then transferred to the Charlottenburg Technische Hochschule where he worked under Karl Lieberman on the organic compound Piperonal. His graduation was followed by three years of unrest, characterized by brief periods of industrial employment, including working for his father interspread with short bouts of postdoctoral study at Zurich and the University of Jena. In 1894, Haber was appointed as an assistant in the Department of Chemical and Fuel Technology. Here, he rapidly worked his way through the academic ranks to become a full professor in 1906. Haber remained at Karlsruhe until 1911, when he was called to head the newly founded Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Physical Chemistry and Electrochemistry in the Berlin suburb of Dahlem. He redirected the institute until early 1933, when he resigned in protest over the newly enacted Nazi race laws. This was followed by four months of exile in England, where he worked in William Pope's laboratory at the University of Cambridge. Now in the second segment, we shall look at the growth of Haber as a researcher. Though originally trained as an organic chemist, Haber switched to the field of physical chemistry after his appointment at Karlsruhe. His work was heavily oriented towards industrial applications. This became the central theme of his entire research career, the elucidation and development of basic industrial processes through the application of rigorous theory. His initial work involving the physical chemistry of flames and combustion led to his first book, Experimental Investigations on the Decomposition and Combustion of Hydrocarbons in 1896. This work would later prove valuable in elucidating the chemistry behind the refining and cracking of petroleum. Beginning around 1897, Haber added interest in the theory and industrial applications of electrochemistry to his growing list of research themes. One result of his intensive efforts to master the literature in this field was his second book, 
the theoretical basis of technical electrochemistry. His contributions in this area include his studies of the electrochemical preparation of several important organic compounds such as nitrobenzene in 1904, his study of the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell in 1907 and his pioneering work on the glass electrode in 1909. The work on nitrobenzene led to a second book on electrochemistry called The Electrolytic Processes of Organic Chemistry in 1910, written in collaboration with German chemist Alexander Moser. Work on the glass electrode formed the basis for the later development of the pH meter. In 1904, Haber added a third research theme, the thermodynamics of gas reactions. Here again, his preliminary survey of the literature resulted in a book called The Thermodynamics of Technical Gas Reactions in 1905. His work in this area soon focused on the synthesis of ammonia gas from nitrogen and hydrogen and its potential as a method of nitrogen fixation. By 1908, Haber was able to show that the use of high pressures in combination with a suitable catalyst made ammonia synthesis practical and the next year the process was turned over to the German chemist Karl Bosch for the industrial development of what is now known as the Haber-Bosch process. In 1918, Haber was awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry for his role in ammonia synthesis. The third segment describes the involvement of our great man in chemical warfare and his post-war life. Most of his published work during World War I concerned the refinement of ammonia synthesis. When coupled with German chemist William Oswald's process for the oxidation of ammonia to nitric acid, the combined process held the key not only to fertilizer and food production, but also to the synthesis of nitrates and other explosives essential to modern warfare. Requests from the military for possible tear gases and other irritants led Haber to propose the use of chlorine gas as a chemical weapon. Around the start of World War I, the German army requested Haber's help in the development of replacing explosives in shells with poison gases. Haber was a German patriot and he willingly began drawing on experiments he had done on using chlorine gases as a weapon. The use of gas warfare agents rapidly increased on both sides of the conflict and by 1916 Haber found himself acting as the chief of Germany's chemical warfare service. Despite his Nobel Prize, Haber's post-war life was hardly filled with honors. He was despondent over the German defeat and felt responsible for the debilitating German war debt. As Hitler rose to power, he traveled Europe fruitlessly searching for a place to call home, then suffered a heart failure in a hotel in Switzerland in 1934. He passed away in agony but not before repenting for devoting his mind and his talents to wage war with poison gases. Praised for his work that still enables agriculture around the world, yet condemned for his work on chemical weapons, Fritz Haber personified the extremes of technological innovations in the 20th century. The concluding segment on Haber projects his personality and private life. Haber lived for science, both for its own sake and also for the influence it has in molding human life and human culture and civilization. Versatile in his talents, he possessed an astonishing knowledge of politics, history, economics, science and industry. He welcomed administrative responsibilities in addition to research work, 
always approachable and courteous, he was interested in every kind of problem. His ability to clarify in a few sentences the obscurities of a scientific discussion was a valuable feature of the colloquia he held at his institute and his organizing talent made him a model director of a large establishment in which he allowed complete freedom to the workers under him, maintaining nevertheless remarkable control over the activities of the institute as a whole. We witness the life of Fritz Haber through a story that narrates the growth of a mastermind as a scientist to his wonderful creations and the constructive and destructive impacts it has on the world. We thank you for stopping by and sticking to the end of the story and hope to see the same fervor to listen to the upcoming episodes. Oh,